Well, a brain tumour is essentially any abnormal growth that occurs within the brain. Um, there are many forms of brain tumours. Commonly, we would divide it into a tumour that originates from the brain itself, from the cells that normally reside within the brain. Those tumours, we call them primary brain tumours because they originate from the brain tissue. The other forms of brain tumours are secondary brain tumours. These are tumours that um, originate from another organ of the body such as the lung or the breast or the large intestines and which subsequently spread to the brain. The signs and symptoms will be divided into three main groups. Um, as the tumour gets larger and larger, it exerts pressure on the brain and surrounding structures and that results in in signs and symptoms associated with raised pressure within the brain and these signs and symptoms manifest as headaches, nausea and vomiting and when symptoms get progressively worse then patients may experience drowsiness and have an altered mental, mental status. Um, the tumours can also present with seizures and uh, lastly depending on the location of the tumour um, the tumour may cause weakness if it occurs in the area that controls your, your arms or your legs and may cause visual symptoms if it occurs in an area that controls your vision and it may give rise to speech difficulties if it occurs in the area that controls your speech. The objective of diagnostic imaging is uh, manifold. First of all, we have to image the brain to see whether or not it's a brain tumour. So the diagnosis and the differential diagnosis of the patient's condition will be very important. And uh, radiologists will depend on their experience to tell whether something that we see on a scan is first of all abnormal or it's normal. And if it's abnormal, whether it's a brain tumour or something that mimics such as perhaps an infection or a stroke that might look like a brain tumour but maybe it is not. And after we make a diagnosis, the radiologist is also responsible for pre-treatment planning. Usually that means our bread and butter, high resolution uh, sequences that will enable us to plan for surgery by the uh, neurosurgeons. And this will extend of course into intraoperative uh, MRI and uh, post-surgical surveillance. And su post-surgical surveillance is a very important uh, aspect of our work in which we follow up patients uh, over a long period of time to see whether the treatment has been effective or successful. So at Neuroradiology, we make use of several new techniques and we are very heavily involved in translational research to bring some of these cutting-edge techniques to the clinic. For instance, we have been making use of uh, MR spectroscopy we have been using diffusion tensor imaging as well as perfusion images uh, using both CT and MR scanning to achieve some of these purposes. Here's an example of a patient who has a low-grade brain tumour and you can see that quite clearly on the uh, patient's right side which is on the left side of the image. With spectroscopy, which we use a method to interrogate not just the picture of what the brain tumour looks like, but also its chemical composition. And with the graphical representation, we can see that the normal uh, chemistry of the brain is being depressed. It's very low. This particular peak here, which is identified with uh, normal brain function, um, has been uh, amputated and decreased. Whereas the um, peak that talks, uh, that um, increased cell turnaround, which you normally see with a uh, brain tumour, um, is increased. And with this type of graphical interface, we can follow up the patient to see whether the patient is doing better with treatment or is doing not so good with treatment. Okay, this is an example of how we are actually we are making use of uh, advanced neuroimaging to improve um, the diagnostic accuracy and also to improve safety of surgery. This is uh, an MRI scan of a patient and you can appreciate uh, 
a fairly heterogeneous tumour located in this area. There's one nodule here, another nodule here. And because this tumour is so deep-seated, it is the surgical risk of excision are, are way too high for us to consider radical excision. And um, biopsy was therefore advocated. We are able to now make use of uh, MR spectroscopy, which is a technique that allows us to not only look at the pictures, but also to look at the chemical composition of these tumours, and then to target certain areas which will give us the best diagnostic accuracy. The best treatment for a, a brain tumour really depends on a variety of factors. The most important determinant being what type and what kind of brain tumour the patient has. And of course, we would consider other factors such as the patient's age, the patient's fitness, other medical issues as well. And, and at the NNI, we advocate a multidisciplinary team approach. And this team approach involves a team of neurosurgeons who specialize in brain tumor surgery, in uh, a neuro-oncologist who is, who is a neurologist who is specifically trained in giving chemotherapy, and a radiation oncologist with specific training in treating brain tumors. In addition to these, these members, we also have um, a neuroradiologist with specialty in brain imaging specifics to brain tumors, and a nurse clinician who helps to coordinate the overall care of the patients. The, the treatment uh, is a combination, sometimes um, one, one major modality is the sole treatment, but many times we need to combine elements of treatment options which includes surgery, includes uh, radiation therapy, radiosurgery as well as chemotherapy and the, the joint team approach of all professionals of all disciplines um, allows us to provide the best possible and the best optimal care for our patients.